Perhaps one of the most anticipated releases of the first part of 2017 is that of Atma by Persephone. And the band themselves is one of the most requested that I've gotten over the past couple of years. It's a band where many have been surprised that I haven't reviewed some of their prior material, and the main reason why that hasn't happened is, well, time. And that's something that's obviously been a bit of a plague thus far throughout the first two and one week of 2017. Two months and one week, should I say. That was an odd sentence. This is an album from a band that is not odd at all. Instead, this is a group that definitely has this feeling that they are a cut above the rest of those that are attempting to do that which they do and do very, very well. What is that you might think? They are a band that really has their roots in progressive metal, but they also have a little bit of a death metal identity to them. Think about what would happen if a group such as Pain of Salvation, a group such as Orphaned Land, a group such as Leprous decided to really teeter-totter between the two sides of their identity with a little bit more frequency. Imagine what would happen if those bands were willing to explore the darker side of their sense with a lot more ferocity or with a lot more of a real challenge. Uh, imagine what would happen if bands such as that would also combine with some of the sterner philosophies of heavy metal and offset them with beauty in order to collectively craft something that turns progressive music into somewhat of a different animal. Consider what would happen if Dream Theater ever decided to really embrace this style of harshness. It'll never happen, but that's what Persephone really has to offer. And this is something where it feels very much like they're a cut above the rest considering other bands that attempt this style don't seem to have the execution down. Perhaps the songwriting is really the key. Or perhaps the way in which these albums are put together is also the key. Consider the very first two tracks on this 13 cut affair. Consider an infinitesimal spark going into one of many. These two that are both under the two minutes of length uh, runtime that really feel very much like an Operation Mind Crime style philosophy where they're trying to set something up for the very first centerpiece on this album, which is entitled Prison Skin, track number three. And then whenever you experience the dynamic of what they're able to do, really judging between the harshness and sort of the lighter portions of their sound with such real grace and real simplicity. That's where you'd start to notice that Persephone had this all in mind. It's almost as though the six minute runtime of Prison Skin is easily set up by the four minutes that preceded it in order to give it a nice 10 minute initial runtime for the first cut or the first act really that this album is able to deliver. And it's not something that is necessarily going to tone itself down anytime soon. Spirals Within Die Being is able to really come forward as a cataclysm uh, to follow up this song and deliver another seven minutes of charm that really pushed Persephone up into that conversation potentially with the elite. And it's something that can, uh, really continues as the album progresses with No Face Mindless and Living Waves, which does feature a, a duet with Paul Madzabal that deliver 10 minutes of fantastic, fantastic music right there in the heart of this. But everyone is going to be speaking more so about the very last two items that this album is able to really deliver. Now, yes, I know that this is 13 tracks, but tracks 10 through 13 are all part of one collective idea, and that's Atma. Four track, or this is a four-part, four-track, monumental, nearly 20-minute affair that is set up, honestly, by the second longest song on this album, Stillness is Timeless, uh, timeless, uh, which is nine and a half minutes by its own right. So right there, the last five tracks on this album, and really the last two ideas on this album, encapsulate 30 minutes of runtime. And this is a disc that is over an hour, but still that 30 minutes being based off of two tracks, big time risk. That means that if this does not pay off, if this is not able to deliver, a sterling and very, very illuminated message that this album could easily fall flat. Well, I'm here to report that Stillness is Timeless is able to really give a hell of an experience. That nine and a half minute runtime does not feel that it reaches its full duration, principally because the music sort of takes you into this world, this universe. It sort of takes you into your own head. You get trapped in what this is able to do, and based off of that, time seems to move a whole hell of a lot swifter. And that's the advantage. That's the power. That's what happens whenever those guitars are able to cascade with some of the softer portions. That's what happens whenever these voices are able to transform and go to a cleaner place after being at a very savage place, perhaps moments prior. That's why that duality, that switch, that easily, easily light-switched motion 
really delivered by Persephone is what kind of puts them at the top of their game. Because, you know, there's transitions all built per... Remember whenever we listened to an abstract illusion last year? Whenever we listened to that and immediately had some harkenings back to Neobla Viscaris and Agalok and things like that, it was all based around how those transitions sort of came and blindsided you, how it just smacked you right in the face. That's what Persephone does. The only difference is, is that their songwriting has matured to the point where those softer moments or those transitional moments are set up and feel very sequential, not to mention also very calculated, and that's their advantage. But the four-part act when this is where Persephone is able to stand back and really explore themselves, explore every single portion of their being in this 20-minute method. And this method is one that delivers the Persephone experience really in 20 minutes perfectly. It's one that if you're not a familiar individual with this group, this is going to be what's going to sell you, considering it has every element of their philosophy, from universal oneness to spiritual bliss to one with the light and then many of one. Consider all of those ideas. Consider what those four song titles by itself is trying to illuminate within itself, and then consider the music that swirls and surrounds, builds and bellows, that really is like a whistle that is being blown toward Persephone's own unique take that this song is trying to represent, and it's one that's done magnificently. This is a heralding cry that Persephone is not only here to stay, but it's a band that is deserving of attention. It's a band that continues to sort of cry out from the mm, ah, bigger than the underground, but not considered like top god tier, saying, hey, we deserve to be in this conversation. Put us in this conversation. This is a 27 out of 30. This was beautifully done, masterfully written. The flow on this very much has all of the expert textures of somebody of a band that has been doing this for a long period of time. And really, whenever you think about some of the great albums of uh, progressive metal, or you think about some of the great albums of heavy metal in general, it isn't something that always comes right away. It's instead something that sometimes builds, such as, you know, Creator with Phantom Antichrist, which was once again very nicely replicated earlier today, with, uh, or earlier this year, with Gods of Violence. Persephone is taking an album such as Spiritual Migration and building upon it in ways that only build their collective being, their collective identity, and their musical structure. They are taking some advantageous risks, but at the same time, they're also staying within a zone that is very familiar, that is uh, really that musical plateau that I have talked about for years and years. And once you reach that as an artist, once you get to that pinnacle point, it's kind of hard to know where to go from there. So that's why Persephone is taking some of these educated risks in order to try to see where the next chapter of their career is really going to take place. Is this a musical plateau that is truly the highest point, or is this a plateau that is only leading to another mountain that's going to lead to yet another and even more impressive plateau? Time will only tell. But I want to know what you guys think about Atma. Let me know in the comments below. My name is Cover Killer Nation, and I'll talk to each and every one of you guys next time. Take care.